You're listening to the Real Estate Runway Podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Sutton, and I'm joined today with a distinguished guest, Miss Evie Brooks, who is an Atlanta-based real estate educator and former Rich Dad Advanced Trainer and Investor. She is also a CEO. And today, we're going to have her on the show to really discuss, an alter, you know, we, at Quattro Capital, we're an alternative investment group, right? So we have the opportunity to talk about an alternative place to invest in real estate. We're going to talk about seven reasons why global real estate investing in Panama, yes, I said Panama, is a great way to diversify your portfolio with the current U.S. real estate market prices surging. So without further ado, Evie Brooks, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great, Chad. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to hear a little bit about who Evie is before we get into the meat of this episode, just so our listeners can get to know you a little bit. So, you know, who are you as a person, Evie, and how did you come to start investing in Panama? Well, that's a many year story. It was by default. Um, I am a mom and I am a real estate investor, educator, and that is my passion. I really, truly love the education side of it. Um, And I, I started doing that early on, um, without even knowing it, I had um, started in corporate America in Atlanta, right out of college in real estate by default. I was not supposed to be in real estate at all. I was being, I was a criminology major and was going to law school. And um, I just ended up in some real estate because I got pregnant, could not go to law school, was really, really sick. And I've never looked back. And so after four years in corporate America, I realized that I did not like being on the back side of the desk. I wanted to be on the other side of the desk. And so I went out on my own and I started investing, just trying to figure it out on my own, which is a huge mistake. I'm going to tell you, that's not the way to do it. What do they call that? Scars and stripes, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, scars and stripes are a lot of skint knees and elbows. Um, But um, I never threw in the towel and I never gave up. I knew that there was a a way and a, a solution and I started doing it. I started getting pretty good. And then I started having friends and family asking me, can you help me? Will you show me? Will you teach me? And so I became a mentor without even knowing I was a mentor. Um, And then um, I had a friend contact me from the Rich Dad Poor Dad organization and asked me if I would be willing to become an instructor and teach with his organization what I do. And I was not interested at all. And they convinced me to go to a weekend seminar, which I did. And I realized I could do a whole lot better than the instructor that was in the front of the room. So <laughs> I decided I was going to start teaching. And I, I taught with them from 2003 until 2014. I ended up in Costa Rica teaching the international expat um, uh, division for the Rich Dad company. And that's how I ended up in Central America. And then in 2008, the market crashed in Costa Rica being a tourism only country really hurt. And so I left Costa Rica and crossed the border over into Panama in 2012. And I've never looked back since it's been Katie bar the door ever since. Wow. Fantastic journey. Very interesting that you found yourself down in Costa Rica and then Panama and coincidentally made a little money along the way in real estate, huh? Done pretty good so far. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that just adds to your credibility in my book. I love talking with people who have weathered the storm of the 2008 financial crisis. That was a a big one, I would say, a little, little blip in the in the history, right? So it taught a lot of us real estate investors a lot of things. Yeah. So uh, maybe at the end I'll come back to what we you know what we can garner from your experience there. But I know we have a, a whole lot to talk about, about why we would want to invest in Panama. So there's seven reasons you've outlined in your bio. Let's get into, you know, why we would want to invest in Panama and what we can learn here. Sounds good to me. All right. So seven reasons. What's the first one? Well, why don't you just hit me with them and then I'll expand on each one of them. All right. Very good. So the first one we say, U.S. real estate prices are out of control versus Panama. They are. It is unbelievable what's going on. Everywhere I go across this country, it is a feeding frenzy. People are, and and I've got three properties on the market in Atlanta right now, and my realtors uh, say every time, oh, we're just going to show them on one day, and the next day we'll take the offers, and we'll take the best offer. And I I have so many friends and, and business associates that have put their 
their houses on the market. I don't care if it's Colorado, if it's Utah, or if it's you know Los Angeles, or if it's Dallas, Texas, or if it's Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and that's exactly what's happening. And they'll end up with you know 42 showings and 20 offers. I mean, it's crazy. And people are offering you know, 15, 20, 25% above the asking price. Oh yeah. And it's just nuts. And it's like, why, why do that? It makes no sense because the market has to correct itself at some point in time. Um, it's just, things cannot just continue to go up, go up, go up, go up and never come down. It's just not going to happen. I don't know when, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you, but I can tell you why not invest in a market that's a lot easier to invest in that has much more reasonable prices that has much more opportunity as far as exit strategies and not get yourself in a position right now where you're going to be up, backed into a corner. Yeah, it's super That's interesting. Right. I mean, talking about learning lessons from 2008, right? One of the things that happened is lenders were a little more disciplined this cycle and, and have been for the last 10 years plus at this point. In, in, in the form of what type of leverage and what type of construction loans they were putting out. And consequently, developers have been a lot more disciplined and a little more reserved in how big of a risk they're willing to take when developing, you know, large amounts of properties that is our supply, right? Well, now we have a situation in the, in the economic side of things, or sorry, the demographic side of things, where we have millennials who are forming households and, and, and growing families and, and really looking for places to live. And we have baby boomers who are retiring in droves and many of them are just exiting, you know, uh, downsizing into rental housing or, or trying to find smaller houses. And, and the, the supply is just not there for that, which is exactly what you're seeing. And then you take, you take into account the migratory patterns that COVID has only exacerbated of seeing people fleeing from the city centers, fleeing from more expensive and more regulated parts of the country to more business friendly and, and uh, quite frankly, climate friendly areas of the country. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it all, it's just, it's, it's this massive thing that has caused a huge supply and demand imbalance. And I love what you said, because everything, every market in the free market, right, is cyclical. And the only way something like this can continue is to artificially prop it up, right? Absolutely. What has been happening? We've printed about 40% of our money supply in the last 18 months, right? When that starts to happen, people are more liquid. They have more money. They pay more for things. And eventually, it, you know, there will be something that causes it to come back. We don't know when. We don't know how. But it's very I call it a house of cards. <laughs> yes, house of cards. And we are talking about the, the single family rental market or the single family uh, home market in, in this discussion here. So, well, right. okay. That tangent aside, if we jump back into the second reason, the first one is U S real estate prices are out of control versus Panama. The second reason Panama is more of a business versus a vacation hub. You alluded to what got you out of Costa Rica. Let's talk about that. Why does that matter? Well, Panama's GDP has always been very strong since I've been there in 2012 up to 2020 after the crash of 2008, we started seeing the GDP just go up. And it, it averaged six to 7% over that period of time, but it went as high as over 11% GDP prior to the COVID hitting in 2020. Wow. Um, and so you've got a lot of industry that is feeding that GDP and, and, and it's not just tourism, where Costa Rica was just tourism. And because of that, when that market goes away, I mean, one of the first things that's gonna go when everybody goes into crisis mode financially is vacations. That's just, you know, a given. So that market just completely vanished. And I mean, it was a ghost town in, in Costa Rica. And I held on. I'm one of those that's going to keep ranging the, rearranging the furniture on the ship while it's going down, you know? <laughs> and I stayed from 2008 until 2012. And I finally said, enough. I'm done. I'm out. Crossed over the border to Panama, which was having a very strong GDP at the, at the time and growth like crazy because they have the Panama Canal and they have the Cobra Copper Mines, which just opened up right before COVID. And they're projecting that the next 40 years, the Cobra Copper Mines will actually bring in more revenue than the Panama Canal. Wow. So when, you, when you've got both of those, plus you've got the growth of the economy as a whole with the expat market, the multinational market, you know, being lured in by the government with um, the trickle down effect of all of the growth um, in the country because of, you know, those factors. You've got the new um, home port cruise uh, terminal that has just been completed right before COVID hit. So we're just waiting to get that back up and running, which is huge for Panama. So, I mean, there's just so many things like that that's feeding into this. And, 
And the tourism uh, component of Panama is not number one like Costa Rica was. It's number five, six, or seven, depending on the, the time of the year, you know? So there's just so many other things that drive that market. So what I'm hearing is prices are more affordable and it is a well-rounded and growing economy. This is not a one horse town. It is not a one industry town, right? Where, for example, if tourism goes offline, you lose everything. It is a well-sustained logistical business hub, things of that sort. So that's very interesting to understand that growth. All right. Reason number three, it is a growth economy. We kind of just alluded to this, but it also has big tax breaks. Tell me about those. Well, let me just put a disclaimer out. I'm not a tax accountant, CPA, financial planner. I'm not licensed. And you don't play well on TV, right? (laughs) Exactly. Um, There are all kinds of tax benefits and perks. The tax rates are extremely low. For real estate residential, uh, you pay under 1% property tax. You can earn up to $350,000 in revenue in agricultural per year, and you have no Panama taxes due on that. So there's just a lot of different things. Of course, the, the free zones in Panama will allow companies to come in and bring their businesses in, bring their employees and their families in and and grow the communities in the country. Um, And there's all kinds of perks and benefits for those multinational companies. And you've got companies like Exxon and Under Armour and Starbucks and, and, you know, Lincoln and and all your different different uh, car dealerships, everything from Porsche to Range Rover in Panama. So, You've got all of that going for you. You've got a lot of economic growth based on um, the economy as far as different industries. It's not just like you said, a a one horse town. So there's just a lot of opportunity. Yeah, we're talking major multinational corporations here. We're not just talking local Panama economic growth. Oh, no, no, no. Trade. Oh, yeah. Samsung, IBM, you name it. You've got you've got all the major companies that have a presence in Panama. That's very interesting. And this next one actually has my mouth salivating a little bit. So back to the three we've talked about, prices are more under control. It's not a vacation hub, it's a business hub. And there are big tax breaks that go with the growth economy. But we talked a few minutes ago, reason number four is there are still great off-market deals. You just mentioned in Atlanta, there'd be like 40 showings on day one, call for offers and highest bidder gets it. How would you feel to be the highest bidder on an investment, right? That's <laughs> so, not my thing. Not my <laughs> That's thing not going to ever be me. <laughs> so very interesting. So let's expand on that a little bit. How are you finding deals down here right now? Well, when I started in Panama in 2012, I went to different developers, the, the most renowned, the oldest, the most financially secure. I created a a portfolio, if you will, of developers that I work with because in my business, one one project and one developer is not going to fit everybody's needs. Um, You're going to have different desires, different geographic locations, different types of strategies. You have to have multiple exit strategies when you're looking at real estate investing because you don't know if plan A is going to pan out, especially in the world that we live in between 2008 and COVID. You know, we just don't know. So you got to be prepared to, to, to step back and, and punt, you know, and, and have another plan, another exit strategy in play. So um, you've got all kinds of different structures and things in place. And by doing that with these developers, they come to me first because of the amount of business that I bring to them from all over the world, not just North America, but everywhere, all over the, all over the world. And so they'll come to me if they have pocket listings, for example, um, I personally invested in a, in a pocket listing and, and we had three of them. So there was two other of my clients that got these deals where the developer said, we're out, we're done. We got three penthouses. We're going to do owner finance on them. Um, 10% down and three quarters of 1% interest, interest only payments. So for a, a $450,000 property, I pay less than $300 all in per month and I can rent it for $3,000 a month. That's a sweet deal. Um, <laughs> my, so, my jaw just dropped a little bit for those on camera. Say that last part again. <laughs> the <number. laughs> well, um, he came and he said, you know, I've got these three. I want to be out of the building. I'm done. I'm ready to move on. Sell these, anybody you want. There'll be three quarters of 1% interest, developer financing. Um, So with my HOA fees and my interest only payments on a $450,000 property, I'm paying under $300 a month. um, And I can rent it for $3,000 a month. Um, Now I only have that financing package for five years. That's fine, I'll be out of it in five years. Sure. Um, You know, I roll in, I roll out, I pack, I do what we call packing the pipeline. Um, you know, and I'm constantly rolling out of multiple deals every single year. Um, and so he carries the note for me, which has all kinds of benefits. Um, I don't have to qualify. I do not have to go to the bank and jump through hoops. I don't have to have a FICO score. It's a non-recourse loan. 
I mean, it's just crazy what we've put together with our program. And it's simply a program through my my pro, my project, my program that I put together. We have a, a boots on the ground educational program. I do a, a three-day seminar training education so people can learn. Investing internationally is not scary and it's not hard if people have the right guidance and the right direction know what to do and, and where to go to put that power team together. And we've already done that. We put that whole power team together for everybody so that it's just as simple as ABC. I can have you in a contract signed, sealed, and delivered tomorrow afternoon at this time. Very interesting. And folks, listeners of this show, Real Estate Runway, we've talked about this time and time again. Real estate investing is not one thing, right? There are a number of alternative investment strategies within the realm of real estate alone. We talk about buying apartment complexes and doing pretty deep gut to the stud rehabs and, and making your money when you buy and things of that sort. This is an alternative way to make money to where it sounds like cash flow is actually a real possibility here, you know, with, with the, the rental air, uh, the rental rates you're able to achieve and the super low, you know, debt payments that come along with it. So super interesting. Let's proceed to the next point. Number five at this point, you can make your money when you buy a property. We all know you make your money when you buy, not when you sell, right? Absolutely. The having money is made in the, the buy, not the sell. To, yeah. Having to be the, the highest bidder on an asset to, to, to win it, you know, in the U.S. does make it challenging, you know. Um, tell us about that. I mean, it sounds like you can actually find decent deals down there. Well, there's a lot of great deals and the programs that we put together, we have negotiated with the developers to be able to buy it below fair market value. In other words, if you walked in off the street to their offices, you're not going to get the prices I'm going to be able to offer to you. Um, we have set in stone, pre-negotiated prices, cost per meter squared. That's how they sell down there. It's not square foot. But, um, <clears throat> so your, your cost per meter squared depending on you know, what program that you get into is gonna be anywhere from 200 to $300 per meter squared less than what the fair market value is, which is you're talking you know, anywhere from 35 to $100,000 savings depending on the unit and the size of the unit that you get into. Um, developer financing, non-recourse loans, no qualification, no FICO report. You could have filed bankruptcy yesterday and you still can do this as long as you can sign the contract and, and provide the, the down payment, which is 10, 20, or 30% down, depending on the developer, the project, and the, the, the status of the project. Is it pre-construction, mid-construction, post-construction? Um, is the developer you know, getting out of the building? I mean, there's all kinds of different things. And we have pocket listings all the time you know, that just pop up. And, and I'll just send them out first come, first serve. You know, I have three of these. I have five of these. I have one of these. You know, and it's whoever jumps on it first gets it in, my, in, our, in our group of investors and database. Interesting. So, so give us another breadcrumb here. Why would the developers want to, to sell to you at below market value? What's, what's the, what are we missing? Because of the uh, amount of business that we bring to them, we do an, an, an extraordinary amount of volume with them. And um, a lot of times, you know, they're just kicking off a brand new project. And so they won't give us a lot. They're going to give us anywhere from three to 7% of any project, but they're not going to do more than that because they've got to sell at the fair market value to really make a profit on it. Sure. So they'll give us that so that we can kick it off. And we bring a number of buyers which starts a, a frenzy or, you know, of, of um, selling that project, you know, right out of the gate. Mm. And it's, it's a win-win kind of a, a structure or situation for them and for us. And that's why they love it, folks. I mean, if you're a developer, you build what you can sell. And the earlier you can sell it, the happier you are. So I guess sometimes people like the easy button over maximizing every dollar and cent and waiting to the last minute to sell. So very good. Absolutely. All right. Reason number six, affordable plan B home opportunities. Tell us about that reason. Well, our market, when we started in, in uh, Costa Rica back in 2003, and then, of course, when I went to Panama in 2012, was all about the expat. The person that was wanting to or looking to, when they retired, have a second home or a retirement home or their forever home. They wanted to change their lifestyle, downsize, leave their home country, whatever, whatever it was, uh, just a different way of life for retirement. And um, since COVID hit, I will tell you that that number one position has changed to number two, number three, and sometimes number four, depending on the day and the time and the week and what's going on in the country that they live in. But um, our top reasons for people investing internationally right now is diversify their investments, um, get their funds out of their home country because they're worried. Um, they're afraid that, you know, there's going to be a money grab by the governments, um, taxes or whatever. Um, the second is 
to have a plan B, as we just mentioned, to get out of the country that they live in because they're just fed up with the, the lockdowns and the mandates and the, you know, the control and that type of thing. And so we've had people that literally have bought sight unseen during COVID, packed their crap up and moved to Panama without even seeing where they're going to be living, um, except just on video and, and pictures and stuff like that. Um, a couple of them have never even been to Panama. Um, and so it's, it's been quite the interesting two years, I will tell you that. Many, many sight and scene sales. And then, of course, the expat market um, will fall in there as well. So those, those are the reasons is, you know, people just, there's, there's so many things going on that people are scared right now as far as what's to come and what's to happen. There's been so much loss and people have lost their jobs and they were supposed to retire in two or three or four or five years. And they're like, you know, forget it. I'm out of here, you know. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. That makes sense though. There's a lot of change going on right now. So, you know, if you can get an affordable home in a beautiful place, I mean, I'm interested. So we may have to stay on and talk for a minute. Reason number seven, affordable agriculture investments. How does that play in here? Well, um, the agricultural market is a huge market worldwide. And you've probably heard about people that's, you know, doing land banking, arable land, because the arable land is becoming less and less accessible and available, and yet the population continues to grow and the demand for food is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And um, so that arable land is, is like gold um, because it's just becoming so much more difficult to purchase or to find. I mean, just in the little town where I grew up in Jackson County, Georgia, I was just talking to a developer. We just built a home over there as an investment property, a beautiful log cabin. And um, when I started building this home, not quite two years ago, the land was selling for about ten, twelve thousand dollars an acre. And now I said, Freddie, can you tell me um, what I can find for land in, in Jackson County? He says, well, if you can find anything, you're going to pay fifty thousand dollars for it. And that's in Pendergrass. But if you go down to Jefferson, it's one hundred and fifty thousand an acre, but you can't find anything. And I'm like, you have to be kidding me. And this is a, a very agricultural area. Um, it's, it's used to be just nothing but farms and farmland. And um, the growth is just out of control. Like we talked about people leaving the city centers and going out to the rural areas and those types of things. But it's just crazy. I mean, it is just nuts. So arable land is valuable. It's very valuable. And it's only going to become more valuable. And a lot of people have been scooping up a lot of Chinese and, um, you know, a lot of people in the United States have been buying arable land and, and just land banking it. Very intriguing. So folks, to recap all of that, seven reasons why you might want to consider alternative investing in real estate of Panama. Number one, prices are actually not out of control compared to the U.S. market. Number two, Panama is not a vacation hub. It is a very central business district. It has international companies that you've heard of. Reason number three, it's a growing economy with tax breaks. The job growth is there. It's cheap to do business there. Reason number four, you can still get an off-market deal, right? Not one where you have to be the 45th highest bidder or the, the highest bidder of 45 people to win it. You actually can make your money when you buy a property here because you can buy it at the right price. Buying right is the key to real estate investing. That's reason number five. Reason number six, affordable plan B home opportunities. You want to get out of the country? You want to have a vacation home, retirement home, and let it be a cash flowing investment for a while? Hmm, very interesting affordable agriculture investments. We just got done talking about that here in the, the previous point here. So super intriguing. How can our listeners get in touch with you to learn more about this and find your program? Two, two websites you can go to. Um, the first I'd recommend is Evie Brooks Panama. Evie is E-V-I-E Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S Panama.com. And that is just a, 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 just a short video intro. It's going to give you some information about Panama. And, and, and what we do is we collect your name and, and information. And then we like to have a, a 30 minute consultation with you. 15 minutes on the first call, 15 minutes on the second call. And I don't charge for this. Now I do charge for my mentoring. Um, but this is for me to number one, get to know you for the first 15 minutes, find out if this is right for you. If, if this makes sense for your portfolio and what you want to accomplish. If so, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. And then we're going to follow up with another 15, 20 minute call after that to see um, what we need to do to get you moving in the right direction. The second one is my working website, which is um, mypanamavacationrealty.com. 
And that just has a lot of information about our events, our boot camp, our rental, some of our rental properties, you know, just a lot of different information about, you know, our company as a whole. Very good. And folks, as always, those will be in the show notes. So don't feel like you have to jot that down while you're driving down the road. We got you. <laughs> and now, Miss Evie, before we let you get off this call here today, I've got, you know, we are called Quattro Capital. I got to ask you four funny little questions and see what your answers are. You game? All right. What is your superpower as it relates to this business? Uh, my superpower is uh, an educator. If, if there's dirt and I have no money in my pocket, I can show you how to build a portfolio. Um, it's, it's all about the dirt and I am the dirt girl. You're a dirt girl. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, give me some dirt here, Evie. What is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? Oh, there's no question about it. My biggest failure was Costa Rica when the market crashed in 2008. I had a 700 acre master plan community that completely crashed and burned. I held on for four years after that. I sold for pennies on the dollar to some of our investors. It was a 506 Reg D offering. We had 83 investors in that. And I'm telling you, it was a tourism only project. In a, in a tourism only country, which I will never do that again. In a tourism only country when tourism turned off. Imagine That's that. right. Not too unfamiliar than uh, what, what happened in the restaurant industry recently. I mean, imagine owning a chain of restaurants when the business turned off for the first time in American history. Very first time ever. I mean, who, who would have ever, who would have ever believed that? Yeah. Don't get me started on an eviction moratorium. That was a new thing as well. I digress. Anyway, so philanthropy. We love, love, love philanthropy here at Quattro. It is one of our four pillars after all. I'd love to hear what philanthropies that you are supporting so that perhaps our listeners will support on your behalf and maybe join you in, in giving good in that modality. Um, well, I, I am into a lot. St. Jude's Hospital, um, uh, tunnels for, uh, Towers for Tunnels, uh, and then um, Suicide Awareness. All right, we'll have those in the uh, in the show notes as well. Um, love it if you would join Miss Evie and her gracious giving in that arena. And last question before we let you go: It looks like you have a free gift for the audience, um, and I think we kind of alluded to that. But it looks like if we go to eviebrookspanama.com, what can we find there? Well, that is where I do the thirty-minute free consultation. Um, and um, like I said, I, I do do mentoring. I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, I do charge by the hour for that. But this is um, for me to be able to help somebody because I, I will tell you that this is not for everybody. And one size does not fit all. Uh, it's not a one-stop shop type of a situation. Um, I want to make sure that before anybody you know, jumps into this, that they are doing the right thing for what they're wanting to accomplish. And there's not one person that I've ever sat down with, and I've done this with hundreds of thousands of people, and every single person's goals and desires are going to be different. And the, the strategy for every single one is different. And um, there's not a cookie cutter plan. And so that's what I do is I, I, I have this conversation with them. I really talk them through it, and I make sure that this is the right path for them before they spend any time or effort or money going down this path to be able to make sure that they're making the right choices. Very good. And I mean, just like we said here, this is just one tool in your toolbox, and it may or may not be the right one for you. So hop on a call with Evie. Sounds like she's a great teacher. Find out if it's right for you. And if nothing else, you learn another way to invest in real estate, right? So very interesting stuff. Have nothing Evie, to lose. Nothing to lose. That's right. Evie, thank you so much for coming on the call. I really appreciate when people come on and share their knowledge because guys, success leaves clues, right? You can go be like a bull in a china shop and figure this out yourself and probably break glass and skin knees and all that kind of stuff. But wouldn't it be better to just take a look at a blueprint someone else has already figured out and maybe take advantage of their supply and their, and their relationships? Very good stuff. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Is eviebrooks.com the best way for users to get in touch with you? Yes, absolutely. You'll, if you fill in the information, we'll be back in touch with you within 24 hours. Fantastic. All right, everyone. This has been a special edition of Real Estate Runway podcast focused on alternative international real estate investing. Until next time, over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.